Hello and welcome. Today's topic is our microanatomy of our inner ear. In my last video, I talked about our organ of Corti, and in that part, I told you that this organ of Corti consists of hair cells. Uh, two types of hair cells: outer hair cells, inner hair cells. So basically, hair cells are kind of um, primary auditory receptor cells. Okay, so that's why it is also known as auditory receptor cells or acoustic receptor cells or acoustic cells or auditory cells or auditory sensory cells or cells of Corti. So many names, but only one structure. Okay, these hair cells are basically supported by inner and outer pillar cells. Okay, now in this organ of Corti, along with these hair cells, you also can see the boiter or boiter cells. Okay, boiter cells or boiter cells. You can say whatever you want; doesn't matter. Now above to these boiter cells, you can see the layer of claudius cells. These cells also supports the auditory hair cells. I mean the uh, inner and outer hair cells along with the, it contains aquaporin channels i mean the special channel for water molecules and through these ions also can transport okay and as you can see in the dater cells i told you that these dater cells covers the outer and inner hair cells okay so these dater cells are also known as phalangeal cells these are a special type of neuroglial cells okay and other non important cells you can see that hansen cell or cells of Hansen, Hansen's stripe, Newell space. So these are the non-important cells. You don't have to remember all these things. Anyway, these are just for your extra knowledge purpose. Now, as you can see in this photo, these are stereocilia. Okay, in the periphery, the stereocilia are very small, 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 small structure, and then along with the center, this uh, length of the stereocilia gets bigger and bigger, and at, at the center, it is the biggest or the longest. Okay. Now the endolymph it is a special kind of fluid presents in the inner ear mainly inside of the membranous labyrinth not inside of the bony labyrinth. In my earlier video I told you that membranous labyrinth presents inside of the bony labyrinth okay and three semicircular canal consists of three semicircular duct it is the part of membranous labyrinth vestibule consists of utricle secule these are the parts of membranous labyrinth then Cochlea consists of cochlear duct. It is a part of membranous labyrinth. So the entire membranous labyrinth consists of endolymph. Endolymph is a special kind of fluid which consists of lots and lots of potassium ions. Okay, and very very less amount of sodium ions. Is endolymph secreted from the stria vascularis, stria vascularis, and this uh, uh, this endolymph has higher voltage value i mean 80 to 90 milli voltage okay compared to the perilymph this endolymph presents inside of the cochlear part so it helps in our hearing po hearing point and it presents in the uh, semicircular canal and the vestibule so it uh, helps to maintain the balance of our body perilymph it is also a special kind of fluid which presents in the a presence inside the bony labyrinth mainly inside of the scala tympani and scala vestibuli i mean the tympanic duct and the vestibular duct which are uh, joined or combined in the helicotrema i already told you these things in my last video now this perilymph connected with the cerebrovascular fluid csf and the subarachnoid space through the perilymphatic ducts or gateways okay this perilymph is resembles or it looks like our extracellular fluid which contains high amount of sodium and very very less amount of potassium now this perilymph leaf also consists of special kind of protein like immunoglobins then special kind of enzymes autolith is a special kind of marble like or ball like structure made of calcium carbonate okay more amount presence in the secule and utricles this autolith is also known as autoconium it is also known as statolith. It is also known as statoconium. Now these autoliths are extremely helpful or this maintains the body balance because these autoliths are very very sensitive to the gravity and linear acceleration or the linear movements. I mean the autoliths are present in the utricle. These are sensitive to the horizontal movements. I mean you are walking or walking back. You are moving your head left to right, right to left. Okay. And the autoliths present in the Secule, these are sensitive to the vertical movements. Okay, suppose you are sitting, I mean, uh, standing up 
or sitting up or sitting down or lying down okay you are going uh, you are jumping or you are in the inside of the leaf the lift is going above and going down so all these vertical movements these uh, autolites are present in the secure these are very very sensitive how this thing works we'll talk about in physiology see you soon in my next video till then bye